Now then, everybody, I'm here in St. Andrew's Square in Edinburgh. And you know what? The festival has started. The Edinburgh Festival. Hundreds of thousands of people from all over the world are flocking to Edinburgh on planes and trains and automobiles to make the most of a month of shows, comedy acts, pop-up theatre, pop-up restaurants, pop-up pubs, pop-ups, just about everything you can think of. So today I'm going to have a wander around the Edinburgh Festival. But what I'm going to do today is focus on beer. Yeah, beer. Do you know, it's such a gloriously hot day. I'm already quite thirsty. I thought I'd take you around some of the pop-up pubs, maybe even take you into some of the traditional Edinburgh pubs, and we'll sample some beers along the way. Lagers, pale ales, bitters, or as we call it in Scotland, heavy. Does that sound like a plan? Welcome to Rog Vlog. every part of Edinburgh is given over to entertainment. Right here at the top of Waverley Mall, they've just built something they've called the Festival Village. So I think we'll go in here first and wet the whistle, so to speak. First up, and it wouldn't be Scotland, it wouldn't be Edinburgh if I didn't start things off with a pint of Tenants. This is your archetypal Scottish drinking beer. This is the sort of beer that you go out on a night out and drink seven or eight pints, or at least I would have done when I was a hell of a lot younger. But it's ice cold. Shame it's in a plastic cup, but I know why it's in a plastic cup. Let's dig in, shall we? Oh yeah, that is ice, ice cold. Even in the plastic cup, it's ice, ice cold. And it's going down great already. It's only actually half past 11 a.m. But it's already starting to get busy. Give it a couple of hours and this place will be absolutely rammed. And the entertainment at this bar has started really early. Mm, first one done. Let's crack on. We're going to head up to the Royal Mile now. We're going to take this shortcut through Prince's Street Gardens, past the fantastic Scott Monument. Always think, if they built Thunderbird 3 in medieval times, that's what it would look like. Need to remember, of course, that this is the first Edinburgh Festival we've had since 2019. 2020 and 2021 were written off because of the pandemic, so it's really good to see all these people back here in Edinburgh for some fun. Fancy some fish and chips? Well, we may have some of those later on. Are you an Edinburgh Festival fan? Do you like the comedy or do you like the theatre? Do you like the pop-up food restaurants or do you like the pop-up pubs? Comments down below. Let me know what floats your boat about the Edinburgh Festival. Look at the registration number of that ice cream van. Big 99. I love that. Can't beat a 99 flake, can you? In fact, it looks like all the ice cream vans are out today. Anywhere there's a space, something pops up. Here's another bar, but I'm not going to go in there. I need to pace myself. Number six. Number six. Yeah. Okay, cheeky. What? Well. 
look at that just behind me, another superb old building turned into a festival fringe venue. Just behind me, that sums up the Edinburgh Festival. A bloke dressed as a banana singing songs. Here we are on the Royal Mile. It's absolutely packed as I expected. On each side, we have shops, restaurants, and pubs. Down the middle of the thoroughfare, buskers, singers, street actors, living statues, people diving down into teacups. Well, maybe not the latter, but I wouldn't be surprised if there's not one of those round the corner. If you might take it in a couple of steps, that way people can get behind you. Some interesting marketing here from TikTok. They're promoting themselves as a virtual stage. So I guess that means that if you take a TikTok, then it may appear on one of these big screens behind me. And who said that traditional marketing was dead? I've never seen so many handouts and so many leaflets before. It's incredible they managed to squeeze pop-up food vans into every conceivable space. That fish and frites van is from Anstrufer. I feel another beer coming on, but first we're gonna have a quick look up here at the castle. Every year, just here outside the castle, they build this gigantic stadium to host the Edinburgh military tattoo. Obviously, for the last two years, there hasn't been a stadium because of the pandemic, but this year, it's back. So loads of bums on seats over the next few weeks. To be perfectly honest, I prefer it when the stadium isn't here. Well, I'm definitely ready for my second pint now, and I know exactly which pub I want to take you to. Yes, it's a real pub, not a pop-up pub, a real pub, and there's a particularly special reason why I always go to this one. Right behind me here is the Doctor's Pub. Now, way back in the late 1940s, my father was a medical student here in Edinburgh. He graduated from the Royal Surgeon's Hall. And this pub, the Doctor's Pub, was one of his favorite haunts. So I always like to try and grab a pint here whenever I can. Today, I think I'm gonna grab some lunch as well. Now, there are two advantages for coming to this traditional pub rather than going to one of the fringe festival pop-up pubs. First of all, your beer will be served in the glass that's got to be a good thing secondly let's face it beer from a proper traditional pub is always going to be better from the beer you get from a pop-up pub my opinion anyway do you agree comments down below so let's get inside the doctor's pub <laughs> So the second beer today is a pint of Bellhaven Best. In Scotland, we call this sort of beer heavy. In England, people refer to it as bitter. Now just look at the creamy head on top of this beer. Oh my goodness. Here we go. <laughs> That is fantastic. The head is creamy, but the beer also tastes creamy, but it's got that real bitter Belhaven best taste. This is one of the best beers you can buy in Scotland. And I'm nothing if not predictable. I've got burger and chips for lunch. Take a look at this, it looks fantastic.
Burger and beer number two done. Well, the third advantage of the Doctor's Pub, in addition to the real glasses and the perfect Belhaven Best, is that it's just across the road from the main part of the Edinburgh Festival Fringe, George Square, which is where we're going to go now. So let's crack on. You walk past hundreds of these posters for shows, but it's worth taking a moment just to look at the design and the artwork. It's spectacular. Hang on a minute, what's this one? Well, I really like the look of this show. Any suggestions, Doctor? It's an improvised parody of Doctor Who. Now, here's the thing. Even if Edinburgh Festival was on for an entire year, you still wouldn't have a chance of scratching the surface of going to all the shows that are available. Al Murray, the pub landlord, that'd be worth a watch. We're a long way from home. <laughs> Welcome to the Pleasant Stone. We are now deep in the heart of Edinburgh fringe country. Let's go to George Square and see what they've got. And more importantly, let's see if I can pick up a pint of pale ale. Wow, they've really spruced up these gardens since the last festival. This is an excellent place to hang out now. This is Bristow Square before we've even got to George Square and plenty of pop-up pubs and food trucks here. Well, they're not really food trucks, are they? They're food huts, but let's not split the difference. Here we can see a preponderance of pink, or is it magenta? Now, this is the Gilded Balloon. This is one of the prestigious festival venues. This place has been around for as long as I can remember and a lot longer than that besides. The Gilded Balloon, isn't that just the best name ever? I don't think I've ever seen so many food trucks before. Murder. She didn't write. Basil Brush unleashed and uncut. Does that mean it's X rated Basil Brush? <laughs> Fancy a not flex binge? Well, here we are, George Square, and I think this is where we'll have beer number three. All of these squares aren't just food and drink. Most of them play host to at least one headline theatre, and this underbelly one is ridiculous. Just look at the size of that purple cow. There are some well-needed umbrellas here in George Square. I tell you, it's really hot here this afternoon. So here is beer number three, and this time I've gone for a pale ale. It's called Atlantic Pale Ale. Oh yeah. Mm. Now, pale ale always has that really fruity, fruity flavour, doesn't it? More fruity than any beer. Whereas lager's probably the most refreshing you can have on a hot day today. And I must admit that Belhaven best I had in the Doctor's Pub, whilst it was fantastic, maybe bitter isn't the best on a hot day. Pale ale is a bit in between, isn't it? It's got that fruitiness, so it feels as if it's almost tropical. It should be drunk in the sun, but I don't think it's as refreshing as lager. What do you think? Put some comments down below. Hello. Well, number three done. Do you know, George Square has been an oasis on a hot afternoon. Just for the record, the purple cow is called the, the Wee Coo. <laughs> 
This is the Palais de Variété, and this is in the other part of George Square. Now, the bit we've just been in, in the is the underbelly bit, the bit with the pink cow. No, it was a purple cow, wasn't it? The bit with the purple cow. This is the Assembly Festival. Just another part of George Square, but this is just as busy and just as festooned with food and drink stalls. Sounds like people are having fun in there. Just love the way they make such an effort to make these things look authentic. This just looks like an old 1920s music hall, doesn't it? Right here in George Square. The city has such a buzz about it, something that's been missing for the last two years. Really can't describe what it's like. It's just so good to be back to normal. Let's head back down towards Waverley Station and the last drop of beer on this little trip. Well, I'm back here in St. Andrew's Square, exactly where we started about five hours ago. The last pub I'm gonna take you to is just across the road. It's called Tiles. It's an old favorite of mine. It's a pub that I used to drink in when I used to work here in St. Andrew's Square. And I thought, you know what, today we've done two pop-up pubs and we've done one proper traditional doctor's pub. So let's head over into Tiles and finish off today's vlog. is one of those old converted bank buildings which looks so much better as a pub. Well, I have to say I'm wimping out for the last one. I'm not going to have a full pint, but I am going to have half of ice cold Guinness. Now, I know it's not a Scottish beer, but it's still one of their best beers. And what a great way, ice cold, to finish off the afternoon. So, cheers. <laughs> Oh, whoever would have thought that Guinness could be so refreshing. Oh, well, that was delicious. I have to say that I'm feeling slightly tipsy after those beers this afternoon. Thank you so much for joining me for this little walk around Edinburgh's festival in 2022. Hopefully that was a little bit of a different take showing you where to drink some great beer. But here's the main point. Tiles, where we've just been, and the Doctor's Pub will still be here at the beginning of September when they've closed the festival down and moved on. It's the traditional pubs that absolutely stick the course and stay the distance. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Rog Vlog. And if you enjoyed the episode, please do subscribe to my YouTube channel. Nothing to pay, nothing to worry about. All you need to do is hit the subscribe button and click the bell notification icon. Until the next video, remember, there's always something to see and to drink. So get out there and find it. Play with the fire if we don't stay.